it, it, it's very important for the viewers to understand that when we juxtapose what was happening um, with the ideal uh, communist scenario, which is you give the land to the peasants, peasants get happy, peasants rebel against their masters, you get the cultural revolution sort of thing, you know, where the people are rising up and they're taking on the idols of the old. But here you have every level failing uh, in terms of the predic predictions uh, for, from a communist perspective. So you, you, you have an ignited class warfare, which they were trying to do. You find that the uh, classes which were being... Uh, freed from the communist perspective uh they were uh, you know collaborating with the people that are supposedly oppressing them uh religion uh, was far uh was far more deeply ing ingrained than many of the communists assumed and also i think what is um important is the advice that obviously that they were being given by the soviets which is you guys take it easy uh, it seemed that the communists in afghanistan were far more eager and, and weren't really listening. So all of these were contributing factors to uh, the actual invasion. Uh, and so now, if, if you can just uh, go into, once they, uh, you know, decided to do this operation, what was their intention? Was it just that it's going to be a small, sharp, surgical thing? We're going to go to the palace, replace uh, this president with that president, just take out a few of these uh, resistance fighters, and that's it. Uh, was it a long-term plan? What was the Soviet plan, and how did it pan out? Yeah, so so coming so a hundred percent in terms of sort of a unifying society and failing at igniting class warfare. I'm just going to say that um, essentially the aim, as the and it's I and this isn't something that I say in defense of the Afghan communists. Uh, what I'm saying here, by the way, people, it's liable to interpret it. These aren't really opinions. It's, this is what happened, right? But. Well, it's, it was ironic for the Afghan communists in hearing the Soviet advice because they were thinking, you got where you are doing what we're doing right now. And that was using the state apparatus to destroy every bit of influence from society that wasn't the state and then reintroducing the masses to you know, their liberation and to be re-educated. And after that, progress would be achieved. And by the way, that re-education is something that we hear a lot of uh, more in contemporary times from other communist states as well. Uh, and I think there's a parallel and an observation to be made there. But um, I think, when, so when it came to the Soviet invasion, like you said earlier, they tried to poison Hafizullah Amin, who'd killed Brezhnev's bestie, essentially, uh, and who wasn't obedient enough. Um, and they did that through a variety of different means. So what the actual uh, invading force was called was limited contingent, okay? Limited contingent. And what it was basically intended at doing was, first of all, overthrowing Hafizullah Amin, who was so extreme or so brutal, the Soviets almost suspected him of actually being a CIA plant because they thought, how how is it possible that someone can screw up Afghanistan so badly unless he's a CIA asset and he's working to undermine us. So they came in and they actually killed Amin, his family in the presidential palace, and they brought in the head of the Parcham faction I mentioned earlier, a man called Babrek Karmal. And Karmal, a lot of these communists gave themselves really sort of ostentatious names. So in Pashto, Karmal means like the friend of the, the manual laborer almost. Okay, um, so they brought in Babrak Karmal and they sort of announced an amnesty of political prisoners and uh, communi uh, communiques were issued across radio that the tyranny of Amin was over and that the, the, the great friend, the Soviet Union, sort of the big brother had come to help Afghanistan.